Hey folks, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at Unreal Engine and I'm going to help you get started on your first blueprints. So what I've got here is the Unreal Project Browser. I'm going to start a new project here. I'm going to select the game as the category. And then I'm going to open a blank project. Most of the time you can leave this stuff default if you're just getting started out. And I'm going to leave the starter content in the scene for now. And here you can select the folder where you want the project made and the name of it. So I'm going to save this on my desktop. And then once we land inside of our default scene, what we can do is go ahead and click play at the top, click inside of our viewport, and we can see that moving the mouse around gives me control and the WASD keys on the keyboard give me that camera control. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to get out of this. And the first thing I want to do is create a little folder in my content browser here at the bottom. So I'm going to right click in this area and I'm going to hit add new folder. And I'm going to call this blueprints because one of the fundamental paradigms of Unreal is trying to keep a lot of your assets organized. You know, unlike a lot of other software that we use like Touch Designer, where that's a manual process that you go through. In Unreal, we do all that kind of asset collection and organization right inside of Unreal. So now inside of my blueprint folder, I'm going to double click to go inside of it. And then I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class. Now, there are lots of different classes for blueprints that you can make, and today we're just going to start off with the simplest one, which is an actor object that we're going to then throw inside of our world. Now, once I have this here, we can give this a name. So I'll give this a simple name, just like print statements. And I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that inside of our scene. Now, this is one of the elements of Unreal that you have to get used to with blueprints is that most of the time when you're making blueprints, they actually have to end up in your scene somewhere. Now, right now we can see that this is visualized by a white sphere. But if I go ahead and hit play, we'll see that that white sphere actually isn't visible inside of our scene. So once I've done that, usually what I'll do is I'll go to my world outliner here at the top right, and I just want to organize it a little bit. And we can see that the starter scene that we chose already had a really nice layout and folder grouped organization for all of the assets in the scene. So I can see my print statements object that I created here, and I'm going to move this actor by left clicking and dragging and going all the way up to where I already have another gameplay actors area here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that inside of that area. And what we're going to do is double click on the print statement in the bottom left. And that's going to open up our editor here. Now, there are lots of different ways that you can create whole scenes and objects with blueprints. But today we're just focused on having a couple of simple events fire off. So what we can do is under these tabs here is go to our event graph. And you can see by default, we'll already have a few events kind of just waiting for us to use. We have event begin play which is similar to touch designers execute that if you have the on start function turned on because what it'll do is it'll fire off a little event right when you start that scene. Event tick is kind of like running it every frame. So you can think about that as an execute that with on frame start turned on. And we're going to use the event begin play first and then we're going to use some keyboard controls in a moment. So if I wanted to grab some action off of this, what I can do is right click and drag on the background and use the mouse wheel to give myself a little bit more room here. And I can just left click and drag off of this white little output. When I release it, we'll see that it opens up this search dialog that allows us to search for different actions and functions and things that we can do inside of our blueprints. And this is a really great way as you're learning Unreal, you know, don't be afraid to just type random things into the search and see what comes back. So in this case, I know that I want to print something out to the kind of overall text border console. So I'm going to type print and we can see that it's smart enough to realize that I probably want to print a string. So what I can do is click print string. We'll see the node gets created and wired up automatically. And then here we have an area where we can actually type what we want to have it print. So in this case, I'll type hello. We just started the game. And then what I can do is go ahead and save this. Minimize that editor and hit play on my scene. And we'll see, hello, we just got started the game, got printed in that top left. So that's great. That gives us one element of play. But what if I want to go back and add some more functionality to it? So let me open up my editor again here. And what we can do is look at the event tick option here. Now, event tick is nice because it's, it's every frame it's going to be firing off that command. So what I can do is similarly left click and drag off the output. 
Let me print another string here. And this time I'll print, this is an event tick. I'll go ahead and save that and go and hit play. Now you can see every single frame we're getting this, this is an event tick being printed out here. So that's great. So depending on what kind of functionality you want, even some of those default kind of built-in events are, are really great places to start with your programming. But let's say we want to have something trigger every time I hit a key on the keyboard. So what I could do is right click on this network background and we're going to see all actions for this blueprint and the search dialog comes up. And unlike touch designers paradigm of, you know, you would go and get maybe a keyboard in chop or something like that and then select out which channels you want. There's a different event already created for a lot of functionality. So for example, if I wanted something that whenever I hit the enter key on the keyboard, I can just go ahead and type in enter here and we can see I'll get a keyboard event named enter. So I can click that and we can see here, now I have one output trigger for when it's pressed down and one output trigger for when it's released. So I could very similarly grab the pressed, drag that out, go to my print string. And here I can say, we just hit enter. Now I'll go ahead and save that and go back to my scene and hit play. And what we're going to notice is if we click inside of the viewer and start hitting enter, we're actually not getting any of that command getting triggered off. And that's because by default, we haven't actually enabled this actor in the scene to receive keyboard inputs. So what we want to do is go into our world outliner here, find our print statement actor, and then inside of its details, we want to scroll down and look for the input area. And we can see here auto receive input is actually set to disabled by default, which is good because you don't want every single object in the whole world constantly listening for keyboard events. So in this case, what I can do is just click on it and set it to player zero, which is going to be that default player that we are using when we just activate our kind of scene and, and go inside of it. So now that that's set, I can go ahead and play this scene again. Make sure I click inside of this viewer, because if I don't click inside of that viewer, I actually haven't taken control of that player zero uh, character yet. So once I click inside of here, and we can see I now have mouse control in the scene, and I can move around with WASD. And also, if I hit enter, you'll see that it's hard to see in the list because of all the event ticks. So actually, let's, let's hit escape. Let's clear out those event ticks. We don't need those. So I'll delete that node, save it. And now it'll be much easier to see every time I hit enter, we can see in that top left area, we just hit enter. Now this is just the beginning of what you can do with blueprints. The system is extremely comprehensive and there's lots of functions and ways to do and interact with everything inside your scene. But hopefully that gets you a little bit more comfortable with just getting in there and exploring and we'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.